All right, hello and welcome everyone to episode 44 of the GGG podcast. Thank you for being here. We got a good episode, a lot of news to go through today. Got some uh, more indie releases as well to talk about. Uh, but before we get going, if you haven't already liked and subscribe to our YouTube channel, please give us a like and subscribe. And if you're listening over on Spotify or Apple Podcast, we could... Uh, use a like or a review or whatever you would like to do over there on those platforms. Um, joining me as always is Phil. Phil, have you had a good week this week? Good weekend? I have had a, a weekend and a week filled with uh, gameplay. Oh, I'm excited to tell you about all of it. Oh my goodness. Uh, but uh, I can say pretty succinctly, I have had a better weekend than Randy Pitchford over at Gearbox Softworks. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, most specifically, I've been playing uh, two games, one of which we talked about last week, which was SteamWorld Heist 2. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Like, if you like XCOM, which I didn't mean to double X there. If you like the game XCOM or XCOM 2, this is like right up your alley. Yes. Uh, and it's really fun with some beautiful like music and it, you really are like... A little a little pirate going around heisting stuff so it's it's really fun uh and also the rogue prince of persia i saw that mm. was on sale because a new update got added with some new biomes as mm. we know it's an alpha uh it's by the people who made dead cells uh which is oh yeah yes vaguely that's a, that calls for some squinty eyes yeah, yeah oh, yes, a, them, them, <laughs> them, those. Uh, it's a very popular roguelite. Uh, it did some really, it did like a Metroidvania, or sorry, it did a Castlevania like whole <laughs> DLC patch. Um, but it's a really fun Prince of Persia game. Although I've been diving all of my time into SteamWorld Heist, so I will be able to report more back on the Rogue Prince of Persia later. But uh, right on. Yeah, Paul, what have you been playing this week? Um, uh, so I've been playing, uh, lots of Helldivers because of Freedom's, Freedom's Flame, uh, got mm -hmm. on with all of my friends, uh, when that came out. So it was good, uh, good to get back into that. I played some of it last week on uh, last week's episode as well. I talked about it. Um, but just continuing to play, uh, Helldivers really into it. I'm hoping everything that's happening is leading up to the Illuminate, uh, but I'm not, I'm still not expecting it um soon <laughs> like i think <laughs> i think that that stuff is coming like at earliest christmas time um probably next year um, <laughs> so i think that's that's where we're at with that um but yeah i've been playing that uh i've been playing the finals as well i'm almost in gold league almost almost there i'm so proud of myself for making it as far as i have uh, but so much farther to go. Um, so th that's been fun. And then my uh, my girlfriend uh, started playing The Sims again because uh, mm. she she got injured and she's okay, but she's had uh, some more downtime than she usually has. And so she's been playing The Sims and it made me want to play The Sims. And so I re-downloaded it because I bought it from way, way, way long ago and uh, <laughs> bought it through EA on the EA. Or I guess I probably bought it on Origin back in the day. And uh, I realized that when I was making my characters that I had access to Star Wars content uh, because I own Battlefront 2 through uh, the EA, EA app. And mm. so um, I made Boba Fett in the sims um and so that's that's been pretty fun was playing playing as both fed in the sims uh <laughs> so um Boba Fett in The Sims is kind of how the shows uh the book of Boba Fett would play out in my brain actually yeah uh, to be honest like I, I didn't I designed him more like the robot chicken Boba Fett than like mm. real Boba Fett if you've ever seen mm. the robot chicken Star Wars uh cartoon no you've never it's, seen those it's been, it's been a while it's oh been, man it didn't leave enough of an impression on me oh <laughs> phil you would love them you would love them as a star wars fan like all mm -hmm. of the robot chicken star wars skits i think they're on uh max if you have max as a streaming service mm -hmm. um i think it's actually included in a multiverse subscri subscription um so <laughs> that would be something though wouldn't that be cool uh <laughs> that would actually be pretty good I'll, yeah i'd take that 
Uh, and then today, I actually played a little bit of one of our major game releases this week, which was uh, uh, Stormgate Early Access. And I'm going to clarify, this game actually came out July 30th, uh, but I did not hear anything about it. But a surprising, amazing little thing happened where it was posted on IGN's front page, a little indie game was on the front page of IGN and I couldn't believe it. And I was like, this is incredible. IGN's talking about a game that isn't a quadruple A title. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I, I decided to check it out. And Stormgate is a free to play RTS currently available <laughs> on uh, Steam. Uh, for those people who haven't played RTSs because there's none out. Um, that stands for real time strategy. <laughs> um <laughs> And so it's, yeah, like I said, it's available on Steam um, and it straight up, Phil, is a, is like a blizzard lawsuit waiting to happen. Um, (laughs) Good. It it is, it is exactly a ripoff of uh, StarCraft um, Mm II. And so it's like the main faction, you're the Terrans of StarCraft II. And then mm. the evil faction is the demons from Diablo. And then nice. the other faction is a fusion between the Protoss in Star Starcraft and the angels in Diablo. And Very cool. all of this is done in the artistic style of Overwatch. And <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> with the storytelling of Warcraft. <laughs> and so <laughs> And, and you know what? I don't care. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't care because I have been <laughs> wanting a new RTS for so long that, yeah, that, that that's that's fine. I don't care that they're ripping it off. So I think it's one of those things where, like, Blizzard has the rights to do – they could do this stuff. Yeah. And if it goes for long enough and they don't and then someone else comes and does it, you probably got to shut up about it, huh, Blizzard? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Pow World. <laughs> like. Well, Power I mean, World. I, honestly, Pokemon has a better excuse than that because at least Pokemon has been making new games. It's like yeah. Star, StarCraft 2, I think, came out in like what? Like 2012? 2010? Like 20, was it 2010? Maybe? Oh, my God. It was a while ago. Yeah, it's like over a decade ago. And Overwatch 2 hasn't really been Overwatch 2. It was more like Overwatch free to play. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so yeah. Gosh. Um, I will say the game is pretty rough, um, and also I think thank thankfully uh, or uh, because of the IGN press, their servers are absolutely slammed right now. Um, Good. So I was playing just a game versus an AI bot, and I was getting such bad lag. And I'm like, I'm not Whoa. playing against anybody, but just yeah. because this is always online, because you want to make sure I'm not cheating or whatever, um, mm-hmm. it was like I'd send my person to go do something and be like boop 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 you know that that kind of crap so yeah um yeah i'm excited for it i'm gonna keep my eye on it uh but it is definitely it needs more time in the oven um Mm -hmm. i would say it's a good year out from being a good game unfortunately so i'm i'm just happy to hear that a good rts is possibly even going to happen so you know that's a win yeah for us absolutely did you ever play starcraft 2 or any other rts's back in the day i did i played uh starcraft 2 i played warcraft 3 um and i feel like there were some other ones i played in there but nothing as good as those like two quintessential you know i used to play command and conquer which was kind of an rts yeah oh absolutely it was an rts yeah i love it i feel like the those are more like situational like all right go in and get this person or like do this little uh bout Right. versus like building your base and doing all that stuff but well i mean um, there were a lot of command and conquer games so you know true that's they were all different yeah, they're all, all <laughs> little spin spinoffs so um other games coming out this week we have farewell north which is uh i get I, I don't know the right way to describe farewell north as much as like it's a sort of chill indie emotional game yeah. uh you oh. play as I believe it's Che Chi, uh, and that's you play as Border Collie, uh, who goes on this adventure. It used to be a working dog, uh, and comes back home in like Northern Scotland or like what is the video game equivalent to it. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be like a puzzle game that's more focused on a story and um, nothing too challenging. Like 
it, it seems pretty interesting. Just not the type of game that I'm necessarily yeah. into because it's. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of indie games that have a message <laughs> that I'm like, hell yeah, I'm into that. Mm-hmm. This is taking a long time for me to to just pull <laughs> this bale of hay. <laughs> I get that you want me to have a moment here, but just let just can I be done with this? It's, it's not a puzzle. Like, it's like a video game you would see in a common area at a rehab center. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's not going to stress someone out and make them use again. Uh, but it is coming out to pretty good reviews. So if you are into or looking for something that's kind of like, um, what was that game? Uh, uh, Journey? I yes. think this is kind of along those lines. I know Journey is the high bar to compare yeah, it to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, but know, this okay. that's just sort of like just a tone piece. For, a, t- for me, a, t- so. a tone piece. Okay. A tone All right. piece. Yeah. Right on. Well, I'm glad we got some more releases. We're really like one, I want to say one week away from the release onslaught that will not cease. Um, yeah. So we're almost there, people. We're almost there. And speaking of almost being there, uh, Concord is coming out on August 23rd, which is 10 days from when we are recording this. And if you ordered the digital deluxe edition, you're actually going to be able to play it on the 20th which I still think is crap that you can play things early for pre-ordering them, but whatever. Uh, no, we're not it's pre-ordering, nice, yeah. but the, the the deluxe edition, whatever. Yeah. Um, but everybody does that nowadays, so I guess it's fine. Uh, but yeah, it's coming out on the 23rd, and uh, they have recently been posting a lot of information about the game. They've also been posting these uh, animated shorts that have been kind of interesting. I, I I don't know if it's making me care about the world that much because that's kind of not the point for me. I really just want a fun, um, colorful multiplayer game. Uh, but uh, the most important thing that cu- came out today about it is that they have posted their roadmap uh, for Concord. And so we actually got our first little look at that. So that's been nice. Uh, but the things on the roadmap have been pretty... You know, pretty expected, pretty typical. Or is there anything on the roadmap that uh, stood out to you that you're like, oh, that's going to be nice to to get after release? Um, <laughs> uh, no. There is a new mode uh, that they're talking about in January for season two. Um, that's always a pretty interesting thing to get, like a new way to play the game or yeah. a new like uh, uh, section of playing the game. Mm-hmm. But... I guess I'm happy that they're doing new free runners or like the the sort of characters that you use every season. They're at least adding one, um, but it seems like they're doing one of those per season and one new map per season, mm-hmm. uh, which is probably the most important thing in my opinion. Like something that's going to change the way you play the game. Right. Um, but yeah, in terms of a, a road map, I feel like it's austere, but it's not anything too big yeah. like it's not getting my hopes up so i'm like okay this seems like an honest uh, working person's uh, roadmap do you feel like there's anything here that sticks out to you or like makes you excited um not really it's it's kind of an unimpressive roadmap uh just for the first season that's going to be coming out in october i'm just going to read off the, that one so yeah you get a new free gunner you get a new map you get new variants for the free gunners Quality of life updates, that's expected. Like, that shouldn't be on the list. Um, yeah. So, new new cosmetics and rewards, sure. New vignettes. Oh, boy. Vignettes. Um, <laughs> it's, it's 2015 again, and Instagram's all the rage. Uh, but um, I think there are... Th- to me, when I saw this, there's one positive takeaway and uh, one negative te- takeaway I got from it. And that is uh, the positive takeaway being that there are six different modes and 12 maps, which I think that is a strong, like 12 maps is good. That's a good number to release with, uh, with 12 Mm. maps. And six modes is great because when we were playing the game, it really looked like there was only going to be three or four modes in the game. And Mm -hmm. I thought that that was going to be a little, just not enough for a, a game that's purely multiplayer. Um, so I'm happy to see that there's going to be six modes. I think that that's 
fantastic. Uh, on the I'm definitely interested to see what those modes are going to be. If they're just going to be very similar to like you know search and destroy or yeah search and destroy, but you got to pick up tags, you know that type of thing. Sure. Totally. I'm sure there will be variations of things we're already familiar with from Destiny or from COD or whatever. Um, mm. But I, I think the negative thing for me here is the lack of events. Um, and I feel that, you know, when you when you have a multiplayer game, events are very important to me, almost more than seasons, uh, because like events kind of make it a priority of like okay this is the halloween event that's going on it's only taking place in october or it's taking place the last two weeks of october first two weeks of november something like that and so you get that player base to come back and play the game um during a specific period of time to re-energize that game as opposed mm -hmm. to doing a season where it's like this is the season for the next four months and it's like that's yeah. cool but you know that's a big gap of time um yeah and i and i get that sounds a little demanding but that's just the state of multiplayer video games nowadays that's just what it well, is multiplayer only especially like you kind of gotta have a lot of things catered uh, i honestly like i'm happy to see that they have a plan but i also kind of would have just been happier if they were like every couple of months they're like hey here's this thing hey here's this thing yeah um i feel like they would win a little bit more that way um that said they are going for pre-orders on the game to like you know uh get it it's good numbers so they have to i feel like a roadmap is almost essential now to be like don't worry you're gonna get more stuff right but um right. yeah yeah you know happy that this game's coming out because i had a lot of fun playing it um excited to get back into it and check it out again but could do better on the roadmap <laughs> yes yes indeed uh have you pre-ordered the game are you going to buy it when it comes out phil i am i'm waiting on that first big sale <laughs> that first for, big sale the first right, big pro sale. probably gonna be yeah. the christmas sale Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, let's get into something that everyone's been talking about on the internet for the last week, and that is complaining about the balancing in Helldivers. As I mentioned uh, at the top of the podcast, um, uh, we've been checking out uh, Freedom's Flame, the latest war bond, along with Escalation of Freedom, uh, the latest update. And um, there have been several nerfs and different things uh, that have changed in the game that players are a little uh mad about and phil I, th I believe you had some feelings about this yourself so i'd love to get your perspective on this first yeah um it seems like arrowhead wants people to use their stratagems more um wants them to focus on like you know uh, balancing to work with your team i totally get that but then they also have things like large swaths of the map where you can't use your stratagems or a lot of effects that like make them worse to use. So I get that the game is kind of a high difficulty, high uh, reward thing, but players then started you know, reacting to that using weapons that would be able to bridge the gap to like make those sections where they couldn't use their stratagems easier. And then it seems as though they saw on a spreadsheet over there at Arrowhead that everyone's like, oh, oh, everyone's using the shotgun right now. Um, let's nerf it because we don't want everyone using one thing. We want everyone to use different weapons. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like when it comes to this, like they want their balancing to be fun. They're saying they want their balancing uh, to be rewarding. What it feels like is they have one flat tire on a car and instead of filling the flat tire, they just take the air out of the rest of the tires and um, or sorry, maybe maybe three flat tires and one tire that is up <laughs> to the normal range. And they're just taking the air out of that tire as opposed to filling the rest of them up. OK, um, that's that's the best analogy that I've heard. <laughs> what do you think about that? Because I feel like that's the main uh, gripe that people are upset with of just like sort of making the weapons less effective as opposed to balancing the game in a different way. Yeah, I'm I'm not on I'm not in agreement with a lot of the internet about this. I think a lot of this is just complaining for the sake of complaining. I think that there is one problem in Helldivers right now 
that is affecting things negatively. Um, as far as like like the shotgun thing, everybody's been talking about the um, incendiary shotgun uh, mm-hmm. getting nerfed. Right, uh, I forgot exactly what it's called. And and like for fighting the bugs, that's my favorite weapon. So like mm-hmm. I was affected by this, but the weapon didn't get nerfed. It just they just took two clips away. So it's like mm. instead of having six clips, now you have four clips. But it does the same amount of damage. There's a little bit more recoil uh, to the weapon. But frankly, like with how good that weapon was, I was surprised there wasn't any recoil with it before. Mm. <laughs> so um, and also they included a new incendiary shotgun in the war bond. So I kind of see it's like, OK, we want to m- not take away damage from the old incendiary shotgun we want to incentivize people trying out the new one so like i think some of those balancing things i think the major thing is people are frustrated with chargers uh because they're they are more resistant to flamethrower attacks now but the Mm -hmm. flamethrowers don't like do less damage it's just specifically against chargers um Mm. and so that is annoying um i do feel like if the devs want like if they want us to use more stratagems then give us more stratagems that will deal with heavy units like yeah the, the heavy units are the problem it's like we have tons of things to use against the light units but the heavy units it's like you got to go in with having specific all right well we need a rail cannon or we mm-hmm. need an expendable anti-tank or you know something like that um well and and you can't really balance with your team to have like okay you got the thing that clears out a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. um and I've got the thing that clears out heavy stuff. But if there's three chargers running around, then it's like, all right, well, let's just dodge for a minute 30 until I get my uh, weapon back and I can deal with the second one. Right. Uh, exactly. Um, so I I'll, also I think the major problem for me is the patrols glitch, which um, Arrowhead has uh, had a little mini uh, press release about they've commented about it they say they're working on it but it was not fixed in any of the recent updates where mm. the like enemies will just keep coming um mm. and that is especially when you're fighting the bugs it's very annoying um like i like playing sometimes solo by myself like on lower difficulties and i'm having like a really hard time doing that now because of the amount of enemies that just keep spawning. And they say particularly it's with teams that are not full. Um, enemies spawn even more. Which doesn't make any sense. Because like you figure like a full team, you should spawn more. You should enemies. get more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so that has been the major glitch for me that has been bothering me. I you know, I, I love know that this. They were supposed to fix that like two patches ago. Yeah, they didn't. Um, <laughs> and it seems worse for whatever reason. Um, so I I love this game so much. I'm going to keep playing it. But I really hope that Arrowhead can, like, um, especially that glitch that I just mentioned, wrap their head around that. And then I think, like, gamers are getting tired of, like, oh, there's a level 10 difficulty now. How are we even supposed to do it if you're going to keep nerfing things? Yeah. <laughs> so, and for me, it's like I, I'm not I'm not trying to beat the game on level ten. So, <laughs> well, I I feel like we're also in this point too where the game is like, and to be fair, it's had a long time of being in uh, the top spot, but people are just kind of getting tired of it, yeah. and specifically like, all right, I've got a really good rhythm down with this weapon um sick you know it feels like you can address something and still sometimes if i don't use it right it'll whiff oh you made the recharge time double as long for it huh okay good because <laughs> i was doing great before i wasn't barely scraping by or anything <laughs> uh i feel like they they could just find some other ways to do it. especially since the audience at least i feel like on the whole is responding like hey could you not mess with the weapons we really like the way they feel mm-hmm. i'm like just take two clips away, so you got to order more uh, recharge or refills. Resupplies, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Good, great. <laughs> That's not hard to do if the team is two people over here and two people across the map. It's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think, like, I feel like they're kind of meddling in some ways, and I'm like, you don't got to do that. The game's already plenty difficult. 
if someone's got like a tiny leg up from using a specific shotgun or a specific weapon, just let them have a leg up. <laughs> just let them have it. It's fine. <laughs> like you're gonna spawn twenty chargers in anyway. It's yeah. chill. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um, yeah. So. Especially, like, I, I'm very interested in it, especially since they added the new chargers that, like, create smoke. Seems mm -hmm. really, really fun. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just, it is kind of hard to get people into it because they feel like they've kind of been, like, it's it's harder for me to get, like, my, my old normal group together just because there's other things to do now. And they kind of feel like, oh, well, I know my gun doesn't work as well, so I have to learn a bunch of new stuff. I have to try a bunch of new things out. Versus like being excited to try new things because there's a new gun that looks really fun or right. some other uh, mechanic that they explored that wasn't there before. So mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Um, you know, whenever they do their next big update, like we're saying, the Illuminate, that's going to probably pull in a lot more people. And I think they're going to wait for as long as they can before they do that. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's press on through the news. Phil, you were checking this out earlier. Fortnite's. Mm -hmm. Disney Marvel's absolute doom update. What do you got for me? <laughs> well, uh, here's the thing about Fortnite. They love themselves some Dr. Doom. Uh, he's actually been, he's helmed several big events for them so far. I think this might be his second. Mm -hmm. um, but whenever they do sort of like a big Marvel tie in, Doom is like the, uh, with one exception being Thanos, they move a whole new game mode. But Doom is the uh, uh, sort of like prevailing bad guy. So he's coming back, I believe, to do sort of like he does in the comics, like a secret world type thing where he becomes a god. Mm. Uh, the whole crazy convoluted thing. But uh, they're adding a bunch of like Marvel weapons into Fortnite, which to Fortnite's credit, their integration of like Marvel stuff, uh, Star Wars stuff, everything they've done, they kind of do a really good job with even the anime stuff and like the Kamehameha Um they make it feel like it should feel. Mm -hmm. So this new update, they're adding in Captain America Shield, Iron Man's like flight boots and hand blasters. Uh, I think uh, Black Panther like claws and Ooh. like uh, uh, booties, so you can like run up walls. Mm -hmm. uh, very excited for it. It's the type of thing. I have a couple friends who are like just always checking in on Fortnite and playing it. So for this update, I've heard a lot of hype and people are excited to just get in and try out these new weapons. So excited for that. Yeah. Uh, the Fortnite is in this rare position where they kind of can just kind of scoot whatever in. Yeah, that they, they can want. do whatever they want. They really yeah. can. And and like you were pointing out, they do a good job when those things are included, like lightsabers, mm -hmm. Kamehameha, like, um, yeah, or like even the Avatar stuff that came out. Avatar Last Airbender. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I want the uh, the other Avatar stuff. <laughs> Running around some big blue guy. <laughs> um, is there anything... I guess this is a kind of like a silly fun question. Is there any property you'd like to see in Fortnite or think that they could do particularly well? Um, I mean, have they done X-Men? Uh, you could get like Wolverine Claws in one of the updates. Yeah, like I mean, I think, stuff. I think with the success of X-Men 97... Um, or was it 98 or whatever? You know what I'm talking about. 97. 97. Um, uh, I think with that, you know, and also like Deadpool Wolverine coming out, you could do X-Men. I think you could also, uh, well, I get, For Fortnite doesn't like getting political, but like X-Men is always a great franchise to do just because you can, you, because it's a progressive, the whole concept of X-Men in and of itself is uh, social progress. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's for me, it's just like a slam dunk franchise to to license um and you have so many different kinds of x-men i know like i think magneto has been in fortnite stuff like that uh, he was recently in fortnite yeah, yeah there was a uh, magneto weapon you could use that was pretty cool right on oh and I, I saw like the walking down the stairs uh glider thing that looked really mm. cool so i guess they've probably already done that um I am thinking all of the stuff that I would want is probably too mature for Fortnite. Like, or maybe I'm just excited for Space Marine. And then I was like, oh, yeah, Warhammer and Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think, like, I mean, this is right up your alley, but I think a Dune crossover would be pretty cool where you could, like, ride the, uh, what is, what is, I can't remember the name for the Space Worms. Uh, 
oh. the like the dune specific. They're just sandworms. You can just call them that. That's fine. It's no, like, no, I need, I need the name. Fremen. I need the Fremen. I need term. the Fremen name. <laughs> <laughs> Sandworm Fremen name. There we go. Hold on. Uh, the Shai Halud. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that would be a pretty cool thing. Like, or some of the different weapons of the Harkonnens or whatever. Yeah. Be cool skins. But yeah, yeah. That 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 could be pretty cool. Um, I oh, you know what I want? Pokemon. But that's never gonna happen. Um, what? No. <laughs> No, you don't think if so? Pal, if Pal World keeps uh, putting the pressure on, they're going to have to find some new angles in, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just, yeah, I don't know. It could be fun, uh, Pokemon <laughs> and Fortnite, where you actually have, like, Pokeballs, and you can throw them out, and then, and then, like, you take over the Pokemon avatar, you know? And they're fighting. Yeah. yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Just that'd be saying. very cool. Um, all right. All right. You let's... hear us, Epic? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about something that the internet is loving to crap on this week, and that is the Borderlands movie and how awful it is. Um, uh, are you at all surprised that this movie is bad? The only thing that I'm surprised about is that when you said that the entire internet is loving to hate on something, I thought we were going to talk about Ray Gun at the Olympics. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, 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 Borderlands. If Borderlands, uh, I am not surprised it is bad. I remember seeing the trailer and thinking, wow, um, did they ever play Borderlands? I don't think so. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, surprisingly about this movie, I've heard that, you know, Jack Black kind of does his, his normal fare and is very good as Jack Black uh, playing a kid's character. Mm -hmm. But... I've heard from a couple of different places that um, Kevin Hart is de is pretty good in this, which is weird. <laughs> huh. Okay. Because it was like the weirdest miscast that I've ever seen. It is a miscast. Um, yeah. Roland is supposed to be like a huge badass dude, and uh, they picked the smallest, not, loudest not man funny. in Hollywood. Not a comedic not character. Fun He's the no. straight guy in Borderlands. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. So and apparently that's kind of how he plays it. Huh. Uh but who knows? Why is why is this movie so bad? <laughs> why is it so bad? I mean I mean yeah. I, I have not seen the movie. I don't want to see the movie because of how badly it's being reviewed, but from the mm -hmm. moment it got announced, I was like, this is not a good franchise to make a movie about. Um mm -hmm. like this is not something that translates well. It's got a very specific like style of comedy that it's like if you were to even think about doing a movie, you'd want it written by the people who wrote Borderlands and not mm -hmm. another team because you're not going to get the same style of comedy. Like, I think it could have benefited from uh, like being a, even if it was a TV show, I think that's an easier translation than than a blockbuster movie. I think the cast was all over the place, like um, um, an amazingly talented cast. Like I'm not, I don't want to crap on any of the people in the cast, but it's just like, they're not those roles there. And th yeah. that's not, you just grabbed a bunch of stars and threw them at an IP uh, that none of them know anything about. And, and then you're like, yeah, it, just cause that's what we, what we have to do. I, I, I was watching, uh, uh, hot ones uh with the vince vaughn interview uh because he's got yeah. a new uh show coming out and um and and it was just so telling of just the the ideology right now of just like well as long as you have an ip with your movie like that's fine and then whoever whoever proposed it can't get fired because it's it's connected to a current ip and that's the current requirement right now <laughs> and it's like this is evidence that that doesn't work Especially yeah. when you don't know anything about the IP and you don't care about the IP. You're just as long as we got a digital claptrap that looks appropriate, that's all that matters. That um, we've nailed it. I think that's the thing is like we are watching Hollywood learn about how to handle IPs. Because we went from like the old X-Men movies, right? Like that was one where they were like, don't make them look dumb. Don't make them look like to put them in black leather. That's cool now. Yeah. Um, 
to now we're at the point where like just make the characters look pretty right and that's enough for our dumb audience to like which is i feel like where they're at with uh, yeah but trap. i'm not gonna credit like hollywood with that i'll credit their costume departments because costume departments have figured out superhero uniforms finally you know yeah. and, and but like like but I, I mean, like, Claptrap is like a di- fully digital creation. Like, I'm sure that they wanted to make him look more something, something or the other. All of the characters, I'm sure they were just like, all right, we'll just copy and paste because it's easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know it's also an Eli Roth film, which the man has the wildest swings in quality, I feel like, that I've, <laughs> I've seen in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the casting itself is just all over the place wild. It is. Um, yeah, the the character Lilith, who is one of the main characters, is normally portrayed as like in her late twenties, mm-hmm. and um, I, I'm blanking on the actress they got for, but she is definitely in her Galadriel? late forties, early fifties. Galadriel is in her <laughs> late forties, early fifties. Um, the one they got probably most right is Tiny Tina, uh, played by the young girl from the Barbie movie. Yeah. But and holy uh, and uh, Ahsoka, young Ahsoka, and a, and young Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like they just this is like ten years too late. If this movie had come out ten years ago, I would understand a little bit more. Yeah, because also Borderland, there's not been a new Borderlands since 2018. Like, what are we doing? What what is this? Well, that'll help us transition to the latter half of this story. <laughs> in that the creators of Borderlands have responded to the awful borderlands movie reviews by saying we're working on borderlands 4 and it's going to be a lot better not exactly saying that but implying it um so (laughs) so uh cool that there's a borderlands 4 coming um i i was kind of getting fatigued with borderlands 3 i think that uh tiny tina's wonderlands i really liked um just because it was so different um uh, so I, you know, gave that a positive review over on our channel. Go check it out if you'd like. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it might be time to move on. Personally, yeah. yeah. And, and this is yeah. coming from a huge Borderlands fan. I loved Borderlands. I did. I loved it. But I think it's time. Yeah. There's. So. There's. Uh, they. They've taken all the juice out of it. Yeah. And hopefully this is. Uh, this is an indication for them. But who knows? Maybe the Borderlands 2 movie will be where it all comes together. <laughs> I want to see it because in my brain there is a, a post credit scene where you see like a guy turning around. like Or there's a guy in a chair and you like hear him stapling on his face. And you're like, oh my god, it's Handsome Jack. And he's like, saddle up, butt stallions. And then the movie cuts to black. <laughs> yeah. Start with Handsome Jack. Oh my God! Like Borderlands yeah. Two was so freaking good. That was the cream of the crop of the Borderlands games. Um, truly, truly. But yeah, I don't know. People have been saying like it's so bad, it's not fun to like. Like even if you like going to see bad movies to like crap on them, like it's so bad, it's not even worth that. Um, which is unfortunate. Um, That's a bummer. This or Madam Web. Uh, we'll see who gets more <laughs> Razzies yes. at the end of the year. <laughs> All right. Uh, pressing right along. So Valve's Deadlock, which we've talked about earlier this year on the podcast. It is their um, kind of MOBA style uh, third person. Um, yeah, third person MOBA uh, that they're working on. Currently has 17,000 concurrent players on Steam hmm. playing the game. And valve has not commented about this game at all there's been no press release there's been no confirmation or anything like that they haven't released it and so all of this has been like people getting keys to play the game and which is crazy to me that seventeen thousand people have keys to play this game yeah. uh but they do and they are and and yet valve refuses to announce it why do you think that Valve is so silent when it comes to Deadlock, Phil. Do you think that they're not committed to the game, or is it something else? I hope it's a secret and deep shame, um, because they could make a real game, uh, (laughs) but they keep making MOBAs and, uh, I guess, now MOBA shooters. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I, I think it's... Does anyone else feel, like, incredibly disappointed with Valve that... What? 
they the <laughs> no that they they made steam after making half life one and two and uh, uh portal one and two and then all of a sudden it's been nothing but like hey here's digital trading cards for steam hey here's a moba that's uh you know good if you're into that uh we know most of you aren't, and we know we've made really beautiful, moving games about uh, survival and very immersive games. But you know what? Here's something you could just spend infinite money on. Go, go have fun. Um, I don't know. That's that's my particular hope. I'm sure that they are just uh, being very tight-lipped about it because it's that's everything Valve does. They're very like they don't say much. They don't do anything. Uh, we'll talk about Half Life Alex later. But even that was like they put that on a console that you couldn't really play unless you paid them $900. Like, they don't seem to care about money. They're just doing... Well, that's weird, actually. It seems like they care about money, but they don't care about people playing their games. <laughs> yeah, I feel... First of all, I think, like, Valve is not really a video game company anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Just because they work on video game projects, they don't put out games. So they, they, are, they are a video game marketplace, and a video game, um, you know, application, you know, the best video game application there is, uh, mm. you know, if you are a PC gamer, you have to have a Steam account. Like, yeah, there mm. are some other alternatives now. You could do Epic, you know, God forbid you do EA, EA Play. Uh, but, you know, it's just <laughs> like... <laughs> God help your soul. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to me, this seems like um, a, just a lack of conviction with this game of just like, we don't really know if we want to take this game to market or do the work of monetizing it with like microtransactions or, you know, or, or we, we don't know if we want to commit to this game. And mm -hmm. like, just as you said about, you know, the steam or the valve index and uh, half-life Alex, it's like these, these feel like really like, passion projects for them as opposed mm. to actual things that they really want to put out there for the market to experience in a mainstream way and mm. i think there's nothing wrong with that necessarily it's just a little confusing and i think it also speaks to the amount of money that they rake in where they don't have to be like oh we need to work on this game and it needs to be out by this quarter next year and we need to have a roadmap and all of that stuff and like valve doesn't have to worry about that because they make money on every game that their retail system puts out um, yeah they have an infinite money machine yeah they, uh, they really do and so i'm i'm still a bit baffled that seventeen thousand people are playing this game like that's mm -hmm. crazy to me um but but yeah it's the uh, part, part of the reality I think what's kind of crazy is unless, unless they have like a real hardcore like uh, feeling in their heart, they want to make this type of game an Overwatch competitor. Mm -hmm. um, uh, why make this one? Because everything that I've seen about it, it looks pretty generic and it looks like kind of nondescript. Um, it just seems like something that would come out of like a Chinese developer that was making a, a game that was a clear rip off. Like, like we talked about, uh, what is that game? Dead storm, uh, Stormgate. Stormgate. Yes. Uh, okay. that seems to have taken a lot of elements from other games, but doesn't have like a specific feel of its own. Mm -hmm. That's what this game feels like to me. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, definitely. So I, you know, can divulge now that it's pretty public information, but I am one of the 17,000 players, I have not played it that much, so I wouldn't say I'm a concurrent player, but I've gotten firsthand experience with this game, mm. and um, it, I don't know, it, uh, I just feel <laughs> like it's just not that the good. pregnant pause. It's, yeah, yeah, it's just not, it's just not that good. It's not bad, but it's, I feel like they really like MOBAs, you know, Dota is their most successful franchise. Um, and so they, they really want to stay in that competitive MOBA type space. I don't like MOBAs, um, that are long match MOBAs, which are like, you're looking at an hour per match and that that's what this game is. Um, yeah. and so it's, it's not that 
it's it's a bad game. It's just really just not up my alley. Um, <laughs> pun intended. Um, so um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm not. It's it's fine, but it seems so weird that they're giving out all these codes. It's kind of like they're doing like a soft launch almost, or mm-hmm. if they're just instead of. Uh, paying video game testers to test the game. They're just like, let's have this giant closed beta and we'll just monitor this giant closed beta and we'll see what happens. And we're not going to commit to any decisions at all. Who knows if this game will ever see the regular market. So yeah, it'd be funny if it never released. If they're just like, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes. You could we're still, still, we're still printing money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right, well, let's jump ahead to half Light for Alex uh, before we talk about our next news yeah, topic the next since, thing. since we're on Valve. So uh, it is it is a mod, but I guess there's been a... For me, there's been a lot of populatings with mods like Fallout uh, London. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is a no VR mod for Half-Life Alex, which I think is a wonderful thing because everything that I've heard about Half-Life Alex is that it's a really great game, a very great VR experience, but on top of that, just like more... Uh, Half-Life, which is what we've all wanted. Uh, So a a non-VR game mode has been uh, modded in. It's available now. And man, I think I'm going to buy Half-Life Alex to play it because this is what I've been waiting for. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Uh, I guess, kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier, it is crazy that Valve made what should be a tentpole AAA game. Granted, it's a short experience. Um... And then hit it behind a $900 piece of uh, tech that you need to have to play the game. Yeah. Uh, you've never played Half-Life, Alex, right? I, I, I know I haven't. Um, I I think I might have played like five minutes of it. I have a good friend who uh, works at Valve. And uh, he, he, he has an index. Or an older version of the index. And uh, so I, I've pl- I've played around with the index and look, it, like the Valve Index is superior to other VR headsets, like no mm-hmm. doubt. But it's all it's also because it's the most expensive, and it's also yeah. because like y- with the Valve Index, you have to install sensors in your in on your wall in the corners of your room or wherever you're playing VR, and f- to use the headset. And so as opposed to just like. Using a, a meta quest, you know, which like I have no love for meta, but like at least I can put a meta quest on and just play it wherever the heck I am. I have to worry yeah. about all the setup and everything. So, um, yeah, the, I remember I remember being at GDC a few years ago, actually, probably like six years ago, but uh, talking to some of the people there who were working on the different VR headsets, and they were like, Wireless VR is coming soon, and I was like, "Oh no way! That seems crazy." And then the Meta Quest came out, like, mm-hmm. boom! Right, right after. Um, and I still feel like that's kind of a cheat version of it, uh, where it's not like fully connected to your PC. A lot of the stuff is happening in the Meta headset. Um, but I think it is pretty amazing that we are there. And it's interesting that we have like VR is is such an an odd space that um, PlayStation Five has their own VR headset. There's several different competing pc headsets and then there's the consumer model of like the meta quest the meta quest 2 mm-hmm. uh but i don't think it's really picked up to the degree that by now it should have you know you mean vr in general vr in general i mean uh, I, I, you know I, <laughs> I i i'd love to uh nah i'm gonna blow smoke up my own butt but like yeah. <laughs> it's i always thought vr was a fad And and it's not that it's not cool. And like, I still play Beat Saber from time to time. Um, And also like the quest does not need a computer of any, I don't hook it up to a computer at all. Like it just works on its own uh, just for clarity. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, to me, I think there is future in VR with gaming, but the technology is not there yet. Or like if you are a super rich person, or if you're, you know, working at if you're Gabe Newell and you're raking in that Valve cash, it's like, yeah, you can afford to have this fancy VR setup and have a room that's specifically for VR in mm-hmm. your home and everything like that. So yeah, you can do that. But as far as like VR being a good quality on a consumer level, 
the technology is just not there. And I think there has been a lot of societal, like a- Apple canceled the Vision Pro 2 or whatever. Um, they're like little Iron Man VR AR headset. Um, yeah. And it's just like, yeah, because you need this giant freaking battery pack to power it and all of this other stuff. And, and people don't like having this giant thing over their head. And, and, and so it's like, it will be there one day. You'll be able to just put on some regular freaking glasses or like some mm-hmm. space looking glasses and it'll work, but it does, it's not there yet. And, and so yeah. like maybe 10, 15, 20 years from now it will be, but it's not there yet. So, yeah, it's uh so, Hey, if you want to play Alex in uh, VR yeah. or non VR, it's available now. Go do it. Go do it. <laughs> No wall. No wall at all. All right. I'm going to rattle off these two uh, last stories, and then we're going to come back to the one we skipped. Uh, so yeah. we got uh, a little bit of detail uh, from the uh, from CD Projekt Red. Uh, the Witcher 4 is currently being worked on. Uh, it was announced, I believe, late last year that CD Projekt Red um, stopped officially stopped working on Cyberpunk. Uh, that it had been patched and updated and it had the DLC that came out with Idris Alba and they're like, okay, we can finally start working on something else. And so now the full team is working on The Witcher 4 and we've got a confirmation that Geralt will be featured in The Witcher 4 but will not be the main character, which like, I don't know about everybody else, but that was pretty like, yeah. Good. Uh, I feel like Good. the the Witcher three was definitely like this is the end of Geralt's story. Even if mm-hmm. he didn't pass or die or anything like that, like we've seen enough of Geralt to I feel like he should be able to step out of the spotlight. But at the same time, as a Witcher fan, I am happy that he is going to be a character. I just hope that he doesn't end up getting joled at the beginning of the game. Um, so. Nah, Joelum, Joelum, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh did you play the witcher 3 phil back in the day i've i've played the witcher 3 probably about four times and Woo! each of those times i have not finished it so oh that's... i gotta lend you my guidebook it's right up here <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> um yeah i think I, i'm i'm happy to hear i'm assuming we're playing a siri but also it could be yeah a, a litany of other people uh a completely new character could also be interesting um, and I think, you know, the Witcher isn't quite the Witcher without Geralt. So having him present is pretty he is cool. The Witcher <laughs> he is the main Witcher. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I'm happy to see more of that world and I'm happy to like, you know, granted the Witcher three looked amazing when it came out now going back to play it, to get some of that, like feel I'm like, okay, I can see the seams a little bit. So seeing, what they can do with the next generation of hardware in that world that is so fun and involved and like low fantasy and dark. I'm 100% in for more of the Witcher 4. I think, and this is maybe just an issue with me, but CD Projekt Red, whenever they make something, I'm like, I'm at least going to check it out. Yeah. It may not be good at first, but I'm going to check it out. But they're committed to making it good and committed to updating it. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, great company. Um, Yeah, I'm curious. I think the... The obvious answer is that you play a Siri, but I would also be open to them just designing a new Witcher. Like mm-hmm. if it's if it's Geralt, like he's the Vesemir of this new uh, trilogy or whatever they're going to do with it. And mm-hmm. there's this new Witcher and you are playing as that new Witcher, wherever they are. And, you know, yeah. he doesn't, like, torture them and kill half of the kids in the Witcher training. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> he makes a new Jedi Order. I'm sorry. I a mean, new Witcher kindler order. Witcher Order. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think that, that would be really cool. But aside from that, unfortunately, no other details about uh, the Witcher 4. Uh, and I'm sure we're probably not going to get any before the end of the year and probably not going to hear anything. Not even then. Hey, speaking of no other details, let's talk about (laughs) the Nintendo switch Two. uh, there's a new reporting that it is not coming soon, at least not before uh, the end of their fiscal year, um, which would be April, 2025. That's the date that everybody's kind of throwing around. Like we won't see it before April of next year at the soonest. Um, What, what do you think? Anything new here for you, Paul? Um, I mean, 
the only thing that's a little bit suspicious is like we were told several times and we talked about this earlier this year that we were supposed to get a switch to announcement mm-hmm. uh, uh ages ago i think i just got a package at the door um uh yeah we were told we were supposed to get uh a, a package uh, god now, now it's <laughs> a uh, switch package uh, yes uh we were we were told that we were supposed to what, is that your nintendo switch oh my god they're just <laughs> delivering it to everyone who they know will buy it <laughs> yes exactly um so i'm a little bit suspicious that it hasn't been announced yet um, I didn't think we were going to get it in February of next year. Like, I think this is a 2025 holiday season release. But the fact that they haven't announced it, I'm starting to doubt that, that it's going to be a 2025 holiday release. And now I'm like, kind of like, what are, what are we doing, Nintendo? Because yeah. the reports that are coming out, and Nintendo isn't like a big third-party company, uh, mm-hmm. but the third-party people that uh, that, associate, that work on Nintendo games and whatnot, they don't, they don't know anything. And usually, mm-hmm. you know, it's 2024, there's leaks everywhere. Um, usually we would have heard like, oh, they gave us the specs for the new hardware, so we're going to start development according to those specs and blah, 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 as we do with all new console generations. But we haven't even gotten anything like that. So it's a bit weird. Um, but that's Nintendo. They, they, they are playing a different game that I don't understand. So yeah, N- Nintendo is wild and doing their own thing. It's one of those things where I'm like, I am trying not to think too much about the Switch too, because I'm like, I know it's coming. I know they're gonna make something. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever it will be, will be wild and weird and Nintendo-ish. Uh, even if they make a full departure from like, I mean, the Switch was too popular for them to do this. But I think even if they do something like going from the GameCube to the Wii in terms of how they uh, are doing their games. I'm I'm into it because they put out a good product. Uh, And I think they are one of those companies that still stays secretive. Like, the leaks that come out of there are rare. That's true. That is very true. They have loyal Um, employees. That's right. Call it Banjo-Kazooie because those leaks are rare. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Um, Shall shall we move on to probably the most exciting topic of of this week? Uh, Last but not least uh, for our reports this week. Uh, So Space Marine has been uh, been passed around and this is not the leaked early version of uh, that was, you know, released or hacked um, a couple of months ago. This is the actual game that's being passed around, distributed by um, <laughs> the actual Space Marine team, and so uh, people are finally able to get their hands on it, and they are blown away. Everybody is loving the game. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of features in this game that are coming out. It has a full uh, three person uh, campaign. A co-op campaign that you can play it has a three-person co-op uh game mode uh with missions that you can do and then it has uh complete pvp i believe it's 6v6 pvp uh where it's space marines versus chaos space marines and um while the multiplayer i don't think has been available or the competitive multiplayer hasn't been available to play uh for people uh, i believe the cooperative and the single player game have been available to play for certain uh, people that they've uh, selected and everybody has been absolutely loving it it's a little troubling to me though watching some of these youtubers play it's like there's never been a warhammer game like this before and it's like you understand there's a 2 at the end of the title right there yeah. is literally a, a game like this made before <laughs> and that that being said it came out in 2011 so it's been a hot minute you know i i played it True. i played this like my freshman year of college uh <laughs> so, so. so it, it left an indelible mark on you it I, did i'm sure it will be one of those things that is um that does feel kind of like define or defining for warhammer because I feel like also since 2011, Warhammer has kind of gotten itself a little bit more on the on the stage in terms of like non-hardcore uh, tabletop gamers. Yes, yes. Um, we've had a lot of great Warhammer games since then, but this one does look like it is taking it to the next level. Just graphically, uh, in terms of like the gameplay, it looks so tight. I, I was watching some uh, like assault footage earlier, and there's a part where one of the Terminants like uses a bone whip to try and hit the uh space marine and he like dives over it 
but you could tell it's like a very well timed like jump. Mm-hmm. It, it looks really really good. Yeah. Um. That's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. The gameplay. I mean, the gameplay in the first one was amazing. Uh, this is the same team that worked on World War Z, uh, the video game. And so the one thing that the World War Z uh, was very successful at was just a sense of scale and the amount of enemies you can have on screen and also being a pretty graphic, a good looking game graphically for how many animations and enemies and environmental effects and everything that was going on. Um, so everybody is ranting and raving about the gameplay i'm super excited for it and they also put out the pc requirements for the game if you're uh going to be picking it up on pc and the pc requirements are reasonable pc requirements and it's like oh my god it's like where like why aren't other companies releasing reasonable pc requirement i think the ultra settings is like a a 380 um which uh- 3070 is what I'm looking at right 30, here. 3070. So it's even less than that. So it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, but like I'm meanwhile, I'm over here still booting up Starfield periodically and I open my, you know, GeForce experience and it's like mm-hmm. you cannot optimize this game because you do not meet the minimum requirements to play the game. And so it's like got everything on low for a game that came out last year. <laughs> it's yeah, it is uh I think it's there's a there's some things that big developers do that really piss me off. One of them is not optimizing your game either file size or like graphically. Yeah. Just take some time because some companies are out here putting out incredible works that can run on a PlayStation Four or Five, mm-hmm. and a PC that is top of the line is chugging to play Starfield. What? Yes. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So I am a credit incredibly excited about space marine 2 comes out september 9th so we're looking at like uh a little uh, over a month yeah or a little, little, little less month. little under a month well i don't know yeah, about a month we'll see a month. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how months go yeah yeah <laughs> we'll see what happens um so yeah i'm incredibly excited about it i'm um just in awe that they were able to include this new co-op mode uh and you know are keeping the pvp in it I'm very excited about it. They've also released um, customization stuff for the multiplayer um, that people on YouTube and, and Twitch have been able to check out as well. And it's just like you can customize each individual like, oh, like it's not just the legs. It's no, I can customize this right leg or this left leg or I want a different like. Uh, you know, kneecap guard, or it's so like you can get really into it. So for the tabletop fans out there who are who love painting tiny little space marines, like mm-hmm. you can actually do that in a video game and have it look really freaking awesome. So I think that this game is going to be a lot more popular than people realize, uh, just with how good its publicity has been going over this last month. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing that coming back from a leak where their entire game in a very early and uh, unfortunately, unfortunately early version of the game leaked um, to come back to this much hype is pretty exciting. One bit of bad news. Oh, you can update uh, your pre-order to get a four day early unlock, which is oh, a no. little bit of a bummer. <laughs> It's but I might do it because <laughs> I'm excited about this game. I want to play it on September 5th, not the 9th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Just release the game <laughs> when it should be released, please. Just just put it out. Stop just, charging just us, us for a couple days. You know that we're addicts, okay? You <laughs> yeah. know that we're going to do it. <laughs> it feels like you're taking advantage of the fact that you made a good game and I want to play it. Yes. Well, they should. And I, I, I didn't play it when it leaked, you guys. I did. Yeah, I didn't either. We did. We stayed back. We, we should, stayed away. We should, we should get a reward. Yes. Anywho. <laughs> All right. Well, we are over time, so we're gonna cut it there. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for joining us at uh, for listening to this episode of the GGG Podcast. <laughs> and, uh, if you have not already liked and subscribed to our YouTube channel, we really appreciate it. And if you're listening to us over on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, uh, be sure to give us a follow and a review over there as well. Um, I'm excited for next week. We're getting closer to Concord. Um, so I'm going to be uh, probably streaming more of that. 
You got any uh, gaming plans uh, for this next week for the future, Phil? Oh, I'm going to try to finish Steam World Heist 2. This game has been calling to me. I just got to a new section where they're uh, introducing elemental weapons. This is eight hours into the game, and I'm getting a whole new part of it. So mm -hmm. very excited. Yeah, it's it's always awesome when you like get to that next part of the game. You're like, oh, I thought I was at the end, but there's a mm -hmm. whole other section. Oh, my God. <laughs> they put a lot of game in this game. There's a lot of yeah. game. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to call it there. Peace out, everybody. Peace.